work in a community uh, near my home, Fort Townsend. And uh, so it's a, it's a delight. I, uh, what Jonathan said is correct. I work in about 200 cities a year, or so far about 4,000. And what I want to share is that every community is on some level of putting aside ideas that they held on to and cherished from the past and embracing the future for carrying those ideas forward in a way that's meaningful. Change is one of the most difficult things for any human being. And yet, the cities, towns, neighborhoods, streets that don't change are essentially dead. And we need to recognize that. So I want to take a few moments to inspire you of what some others have done. And is it okay to turn out the lights? Does anyone know how to do that? So let's just start with the built environment. The gentleman standing in the left panel perhaps assumes that light. What we're now saying is that for all people to come together to craft a common vision will allow us to go from something that has been subtracting value, and that is faceless places, into those that we care about, will nurture, will find ways to sustain, and so on. Uh, one of my backgrounds is in transportation, and one of the things I want to stress is that huge amounts of money, just as with, in your case, with, with the, the ferry, the land accommodation, uh, we should now use every single dollar of our transportation money to enhance the value of our land, the value of our lives, the quality of our lives. And so what I'd like to share uh, is a very special place in the world uh, that uh, we can add everything yet to the beauty of, of the wonderful place we inhabit. To understand not only its heritage, heritage but uh, what our opportunities are to take the sum total of the assets available to us and to respect what is there with nature and what we can nurture into a more meaningful place. During our walk today, uh, it was mentioned that there used to be sliding boards in, uh, I think it was meant to be this part, but we removed sliding boards uh, because of fear of tort liability and think what we took away from children when we did that. Um, you've got wonderful vertical terrain. This is uh, Omaha, Nebraska on the left, uh, where I photographed uh, children enjoying not only a slide, but a slide on top of concrete steps. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think the point, though, is for well, today, uh, use your eyes, your ears, your imagination, work with your neighbors and build something that will last and last well beyond all of our lives and, and be uh, uh, adding to the history of the culture and meaning and so on. I have enjoyed coming to your community for quite a number of years, going back at least 20, and uh, I think you've got some businesses that uh, are probably older than I am, and uh, other places though that are pure acts of love. Uh, I've been showing this image, by the way, around the nation. And people always want to know uh, where to come to, to to be inspired and so on. And I assume this was a artist that crafted this, right? And worked with the community to craft something beautiful. But even now, your most recent project, uh, this is one of the best remade streets I've seen anywhere in America. And as I understand, there used to be a third lane out there for cargo trucks to park to work right. And that's an issue you had to work through, which is more important to get the, the uh, angled parking, the rain gardens, and all of this uh, to, to work in concert. And truly, I'm going to be showing these pictures in Ontario in just a few days. And uh, I'd also to understand that every good idea starts with small groups of uh, such as sustainable uh, Bainbridge folks uh, working ideas out, and then taking on the big issues, like dead trees. Is it okay to cut down a dead tree before it falls on something? And there are always people who say, no, we have to have that tree. Well, these are the things you need to talk about. What, what are the things that are places you can't touch um, and others that you must touch and then figure out how to do that? Uh, and, and what are those connectivity issues? And where should the trails be? And how open should they be? Or how much of a sense of adventure should there be? This is your canvas, and only you can work on it. No outsider, such as myself, can come in and suggest an idea that has sticking power. But I do want to inspire you by showing you 
that um, this is a place that captures a lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of uh, carryover to create brand new products to celebrate the social exchange that occurs on the streets and so on. With that, I want to start with the core principle. Why do cities exist? So what is the energy that has brought all cities throughout the history of the world together? It's one word. People. People part of it. Commerce. Community, commerce. If you combine those, you get a new word called exchange. And with exchange, you not only have the exchange of our service products and goods, that's our jobs, that's the economy, it's exchange of our culture, our friendship, our ideas, our knowledge, our wisdom, our passion, the glue that holds us together and allows us to build better communities. And as long as we put all of our, our focus today on building community, then building the park becomes easy. What would you put in the park? Uh, just natural ways for people to socialize? Uh, what would be an indicator that you've achieved success? This is Friday Harbor, and I kid you not, when I go there, no one is permitted to sit in that bench more than three minutes because it's 100% location and everybody knows it. Uh, but they, they get quizzical looks if they stay there more than three minutes. And, uh, but I think it's important to point out that all waterfront towns not only share similar heritage, they have similar opportunities. Did we see that all five of these people are doing exactly the same thing? What are they doing? They're watching people, and they're watching the water, and they're being watched by people. They want to go and they want to be watched by people. That's why we spend so much money on our outfits, right? <laughs> um, but in our country, we don't have a polite word for what they're doing. People are loitering. <laughs> now, in Europe, you would never dream up such a word. Nobody knows what that means. In fact, you grade the quality of your waterfront by how long people do linger, right? So we need ways to define when we've achieved the perfect waterfront. And I truly believe this is one of the best waterfronts in North America. It is Victoria. And they've worked many decades to achieve what they have. But I also want to share with you some common principles, some of which are lacking in the current park. And then we can talk about how you get there. Back in 1928, when then James Perry was doing uh, a lot of his original work, the automobile was coming into vogue, he put forth some principles that would allow us to remain livable and walkable, terms that didn't even exist back then, and honor the car and not let the car do the damage that it did to uh, later communities. If we were to overlay a modern waterfront community on that, this is uh, Seaside perhaps one of the most famous of new towns in America, and look how they honored all of the principles. There's no possible way for a car to go fast in that community. You cannot do it because of the pattern that got created. And you've got mostly that pattern, but you've got a few streets and you've got to get a few missing ports. So now let's talk about an, another town. This is not a wealthy town. It's Fort Pierce, Florida, circa a long, long time ago. <laughs> I'll focus on one building just so we have a reference point, and now take a look at what happens to their town. Now, you have not done this over time, however. If you don't have a careful watch, things that would erode your downtown could happen just as they did to Fort Pierce. Twenty years ago, the people of Fort Pierce came together to craft a common vision. There were not as many people in the room as there are here today. This gives me incredible hope. Uh, what they were able to pull off, and you can see it today, is this. And the reason they could do it is the original bones structure of the streets pointing to the water were in place. You still have those corridors available to you. You need to protect them, preserve them, put them together, and allow the incredible vista points 